today I'll show you how to make this original design I call depth charge. It takes an Insta360 camera, but you could probably use GoPros or anything else like that. And using this simple device that I made for about $10, it allows you to film underwater, above water, and right at that hover depth. So you can split the screen above and below water. Interested? Here we go. This is an Insta360 X1 camera. It weighs 116, 115 grams, by the way. This is a venture case for said camera. This is the equivalent in clay, 115 ounces, because I don't necessarily want to risk getting my camera wet as I develop this thing. So put it in there, seal it down. Got a regular bottle here. I've got a bottle cap. And then this is just one quarter, 20, 12 inch rod with a little bit of extra bolt here. And then I've got a couple of these couplers on either end. And this isn't just an extension. Originally, I was just gonna go with the 12 inch rod off of the bottle, but I think I might have to go a little longer because I'm trying to balance this thing in the water so that it's up and down straight. And then I'm using a rubber washer, a 417 four millimeter, a quarter inch bolt that's three quarters of an inch long, a quarter inch washer, quarter inch nut, quarter inch lock washer, quarter inch by 20 by seven eighth inch coupling nut, two hockey pucks. I'll reference a version of how I put the hole in the hockey pucks in a previous build that I actually used to put a 360 camera on some hockey pucks and play around with them with a stick. I'm thinking this bottle, which is probably half a liter, may not be enough to float this thing vertically, especially if I put an extension on it, which I'm thinking about doing. So I'm gonna go with a one liter bottle. And luckily this one has a black cap on there. I'm gonna drill a hole here at the bottom, quarter inch, and a quarter inch hole here. So let me show you how you do that. So I take a center punch and I'm going to mark the center of the hole. And as you can see, that's probably where the most plastic is because that's where the cutoff point is. Before I drill this with a quarter inch drill bit, I'm going to put a smaller starter hole in there to help guide this bigger drill bit. This is one of the smallest drill bits I have. So yeah, I'm a little off center so I can actually use the drill and widen the hole out until I kind of feel I'm right now. It's pretty good in the center. I'm gonna step up one more drill bit just to make the quarter inch drill hole that much easier. And to not drill into my hand. Take your time and be careful. This is kind of an art of the fact that I'm trying to drill the hole on camera. Do a fit check. You want it loose, and I'll show you why in just a second. You want to put a center quarter inch hole in this side. Using the same process, I used a small drill bit to make the initial hole, a larger drill bit to make a slightly bigger hole. After I used the hole punch, to, that's pretty close to the center. And now I'm going off camera and I'm gonna use this drill bit. I'm gonna drill through here huh, so that it's flat against the bottom of my sacrifice wood and I'm gonna drill that quarter inch hole. I didn't wanna drill on my cutting surface but this is what I did off camera. Basically I held this cap in place and then did the final hole like that for this washer. I need to make that hole bigger. Just took and laid it down here on this sacrificial wood and drilled out the hole that way. Now I'm gonna put it on the quarter inch bolt you can use a screwdriver if you want you want to get this all the way to the end here's one of the trickiest parts of the build I don't have a screwdriver that goes all the way down into the bottle if I did that would be great but since I don't I'm going to use this telescoping magnet and this is why you make the hole a little bit bigger than quarter inch 
Don't worry about it leaking. You're actually going to want to put water in here eventually. The reason why I have this rubber washer in there is to seal it off. So slide it in here like this. It's a quarter inch lock washer. Put it down on there like that. Get your bolt and just slide it on. Now the lock washer is going to help you cinch this bolt down really well, unless you had a giant screwdriver on this end. Use this ratchet and kind of cinch it down. You want to get plenty of threads for the lockout. And that's in there. You can kind of see that the, the rubber washer is bowed and that's perfect because that's just going to seal the bottle off. Again, this is the strongest part of the bottle right here. And that's why I'm going to the center. So this is a little bit of a bigger bottle than this. Hopefully it will give you a little more flexibility. We'll find out during the test. Here's the buildup on the cap. Half inch long quarter inch bolt. Locking washer. Pre-drilled washer like I went said before. Now the whole idea is to cinch this down. It's just about trying to give a cushion so that you have a good lock on to the venture case. Take another quarter inch washer, put it on top, and I'm just going to check out the venture case, see how well it works. Screw it on like that. Yep, like it. Yeah, that's rock solid. At the bottom, I'm using the one quarter inch, 27 eighth inch long coupling nut. And I want those cinched down really good. And this happens to be smaller than a regular nut. So it works out well, because then I can put this wrench on there, this wrench on here, cinch them down. That's nice and tight. So this will be what I call the buoyancy compensator. Whether it's this area here, I don't think there'll be enough buoyancy compensation on that to get the 360 where I really want it to be in the water. And I'm not sure that this is long enough. This is currently 18 inches long. It's a little wobbly. Here's the end, just like if they had camera in it. And then here's the end with the hockey pucks to bounce it off almost in the center. So I'm going to have this other one ready so I can bring, drop these weights down a little bit more to help float this stable on this end. But we'll see how it does in the pool. This is all guesswork at this point. A little bit of physics, a little bit of calculations, but the proof is in the water. Test one, depth charge, 18 inches, hockey pucks, and the dead load. We're going to put it in the water to see how it does. Okay, it leans back a little bit, not stabilizes. Hmm. Tighten down on that Phillips head and we're going to see if that makes any difference. And we're going to throw it in sideways. Okay, it writes itself and I tried to straighten it out. It's a little straighter in the water. Not bad. So now I've filled the bottle up. This is the buoyancy compensation piece to lower the camera in the water. Ideally, I could have this hover a little more than halfway full. I'm going to see where it ends up in the water. So here we go. Drop test. Okay. it's. Coming up, now this is what I was thinking about using for like a partial shot, and that's just about right. I'm probably gonna have to take a little bit of the water out. Again, I'm trying to get that split on the lens so that you can get half the shot underwater and half the shot above the water. Okay, I've taken it out a little bit more, and I'm trying to get the water level to be right around halfway through the lens so you can get a above water and below water shot. Here we go. goes down way below the water, bobs up, and then just trying to steady it out. 
50-50 on the lens. That's just about right. Mark the bottle. So at the top of the water here, I know that that's going to set the water right here. Now it's going to bob up and down and that's fine. That's more of a natural look. But then you don't have to hold it. It's suspended. I filled the water bottle up to where I'm guessing this will take it just below the water surface. Now if I was to fill this whole thing up with water, it would just go to the bottom. But I want to see if I can get it to hover in the water. Hover in the water means just stabilize at a certain depth. Here we go, water hover test. Okay, it's... Wow, there's not a lot of difference. You might be able to see it went stable right down at the bottom, which is a good reference point. Unlike when we tried it straight with the pocky pucks on the bottom of the venture case and it tipped over, this has actually went straight very calmly down to the bottom. So now you're sitting about 20 inches, two feet off the bottom with the lens and you've got a stable position that's gonna hold there. So that's a good test, just a little different than what I thought. It's very sensitive to the amount of water in the bottle. Okay, I've marked the bottle. This is where it hovers in the water like that. This is, it does a nice gradual touch down to the bottom. And now I'm going to somehow figure out exactly where that height is, where I can get it to hover. One foot below the water. I'm going to get this thing, but it's going to take a little while. So here we go. Another test. Hopefully this will get it there where we need to go. Down the bottom. Come up. Come up. Uh, it's either on the bottom or very close and hovering like it did before. When we went to retrieve the bottle from the bottom, so about that far off the bottom, just a couple inches, we we're getting there, but we just need to take a little more water out. Yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to show you the difference between resting on the top, the surface where it is now, and being on the bottom is that much water. Okay, we've had so much fun literally taking drops out of the bottle that I think that's going to be a point where you have the camera so it's just below the surface. We want to make sure we document that. We're going to do the one liter bottle, see if we can get that thing to hover a little below the first surface or that's just going to have to be another video because it's taking way too long. Okay, so as I feared, the bottle is not going to do well with this. We're going to have to extend the length of the thing down here. Okay, so we have a two foot long section of this one quarter inch 20 thread rod. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna really balance it out well. And maybe we'll just sit it at the bottom and it will sit perfectly in the pool right where I'm trying to get it. So here we go. All right. I like that. I can get it up higher in the air. So I'm thinking one liter bottle is the way to go on this build. Okay, after much trial and error, we've got it marked at where this thing will sit right there and hover with a little bit of wave action. Ideally, half the video is underwater, half the video is up above water. And ironically, it's right where that bottle is for this pool on this day, you know, chemistry, but, but that gets you really kind of in the ballpark. So here we go, we're gonna try it out See how it works. Okay, hard to see. So if you go down here, and you can see it right there, there's a little wave action, but it's right as close to splitting that circle where the lens of the camera will be close as you can be. So now we're going to pull it out, put the camera in, and do some real live footage testing. And also verify whether or not the venture case is leaking. Alright, we're doing this for real now. I'm going to throw the camera in, the water, and then he's going to jump in the water and we'll see what we get. Okay, we're recording. We're going to throw the camera in. We're going to come up to speed. 
course, the airplane has to go over. Okay, it's a perfect angle. Jump in the water so we can get some data. Hold on. Okay, wherever the camera is, jump in towards the camera. Let it come around. Jump in now. Now, if I can only figure out how to adjust that dang thing so it stays in one direction. Okay, so this line determines anything more water above here, the camera's gonna sink. And if you take all the water out, it's gonna be floating above the water. So we're gonna try two more shots like that. One where it's filled with water and it's sitting on the bottom and he jumps in. And the other one is where it doesn't have any water and it's floating on the top and he jumps in to give you different perspectives. So you get three different kinds of capabilities with this system here. Okay, this time we filled the water up so that it will sit there and land on the bottom. And so it will be a perspective above the bottom, the length somewhere between two and three feet off the bottom. Turn the video on. All right, it's on. It's on, we're gonna throw it in the water and then we're gonna do an underwater shot. All right, now watch out where it goes. Right there. Is it facing you? Whatever direction it's facing, yeah. that's where you, okay. It's Jump right here. Jump right here. Okay. On the X? Yep. Okay, retrieve the camera, please. All right, you're taking the camera off. We're going to put the water back in the pool and go with an above water shot. anything above this line would probably be above water but we're gonna see how high we can get this camera going above the water cameras on we're ready to go perfect jump in that's a perfect direction okay this time we're feeling pretty confident but also we're getting a little dangerous we're gonna actually turn the camera on I'm gonna hand it to him he's gonna take it with him in the jump so here we go, we're gonna turn the camera on. Come over here, get ready to hand, get it. Yeah. There, Bubba. <laughs> Do you wanna hold it by the ball? No, here. Oh. Jump in with it, release it, yeah. and then, okay, ready? Yeah. Try to keep it up and down. All right, like that. Yeah, go, hurry up. Kind of a selfie. Or? I don't know. Another thing about this design that you might be interested in is it breaks down fairly easy. It's about three feet from here to here, but this breaks down into a one foot section, this is a one foot section, and then the bottle, and then this comes off. So it all gets really compact and is easy to move around, transport, you can put it in a backpack. I think we got something really interesting here. I'd be interested to see what other people think if they make one and test it out themselves. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'm all about making prototypes, building things, and doing things that nobody's ever done before. This has never been done before, and it was a lot of fun, and we're going to use it a lot more in the future, and all sorts of applications. Stay tuned for RoboMaster videos, we're working on that too, 360s, got them all, coming soon.